what is going on everyone? Uh, so before we get started with the topic of today's video, which is gonna be rep ranges and load, so how heavy should you go, um, I wanna quickly let you guys all know uh, that my Fundamentals Hypertrophy program is now live on my website. Uh, so you go to jeffnipper.com, you can check it out there. Uh, very quickly, uh, it's basically three separate routines. Um, so it was the upper lower split, uh, the full body split, and the body part split, which I actually modified in the program uh, to make it a little bit more optimized from a frequency perspective. Um, but anyway, you've got three full eight week full body programs. The program was designed for anyone with, I'm gonna say zero to two years of training experience or anyone who hasn't yet established a solid strength foundation. Um, so if you're someone who's been kind of just fluffing and pumping in the gym uh, for however long, uh, this program will be suitable for you since the goal of the program is to lay that hypertrophy foundation. Uh, for the first week of launch, I'm gonna be selling it for $29.99 and then after the first week, it'll go up to $39.99. Uh, go check it out, and without further ado, I hope you guys all enjoy uh, part three of the Fundamentals series. Okay, welcome everyone to the next installment of the Fundamentals series. Uh, before we dig into the main topic of this video, which is going to be load and intensity, uh, I'd like to do just a quick recap of the ladder as we've set it up so far. Um, so if any of you guys are interested in skipping the recap, I'll put a timestamp up right here of the time you can go to where we dig into the new stuff. Uh, but just very quickly, uh, we've set up our ladder over here uh, where we've got the two uprights of the ladder being safety and enjoyment. Um, so our routine has to be safe, one that we can do over the long term and one that we enjoy, so we'll adhere to it better. Uh, and that is what forms a sustainable approach. Uh, next up, we've got effort. Uh, so after we've got a sustainable approach, now we need to apply effort. Um, no matter how optimal the rest of the stuff is, if you're not exerting yourself appropriately, uh, it's not gonna do much work for you. Uh, then we also need to apply progressive overload and keep prioritization in mind. Uh, so we wanna be doing more every training week, whether that's more reps, more weight, um, or better technique, and so on. And also prioritization. We wanna keep the goal, the goal. You wanna prioritize your weak points and train in accordance with what is most important to you. And then finally up here, the top rung of the ladder, we've got the training variables. And we've already covered two of those, so volume and frequency. Uh, so volume is how much work you should be doing. And we set out 10 to 20 sets per body part per week as a good optimal ballpark for most beginners. And I actually did a follow-up video to that where I pay lip service to some newer research that suggests that perhaps higher than 20 sets could be better for more advanced trainees or those who are stalled. Uh, and then we also talked about frequency, so how you should split that volume up. And we covered, I think, four sample splits of how to make sure that you're training each body part at least two times per week. And I think my favorite out of those that we discussed was the upper lower split, uh, but we also looked at a full body split, which I think is good. Uh, and then the classical bro split, uh, which I think isn't the most optimal, but does get a bit too hard of a bad rap in my opinion. Uh, and then we also looked at the push-pull leg split, which I've covered in length in another series. Uh, but like I said in the last video, I think that's a little bit more of a slightly uh, advanced or intermediate routine. Um, and also if you guys are anxious uh, to learn all this stuff, uh, before I get the videos put out, I'd recommend checking out the 3DMJ Muscle and Strength Pyramids videos. Uh, there's a lot of overlap between these, and Eric Helms over there does a great job of going into a ton of detail, probably more detail, and a slightly different perspective than what I'll get into here. Um, but without further ado, uh, let's jump right into load and intensity. So this term intensity is one that you'll see a little bit more often in the actual scientific literature. Um, and it confuses some people because they think it means basically how hard you're training. Uh, but what it means in the literature is basically just how heavy is the weight. Um, so we can use both of these terms interchangeably. Load, intensity, basically means how heavy are you going? Um, and there's this age old question uh, in training culture, whether high reps are better or whether low reps are better uh, for putting on muscle. And you have people who are just as vocal on either side of this debate. Uh, some people will insist that you need to use plenty of high reps to really break down the muscle and fatigue the body, and that's what sort of causes the muscle to grow. And you have other people that say you have to lift heavy weights for low reps, and that's really what 
creates that tension, and gets the muscle to respond. And as we'll see, there's a bit of truth to both of these sides. Um, but in particular, what I wanna look at is two studies. Um, so they both came out of the same research group led by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld. Um, the first one was published in 2014. And this study compared two different groups. So they gave one group uh, a program where they were doing 10 reps and another group where they were doing three reps. And just for a bit of context here, uh, of course, if you're doing low reps, that means by default that you're doing heavy weight. Uh, so low reps equals heavy and high reps equals light. Um, so these are at the extreme and then obviously here in the middle you have moderate reps. Uh, which you'd be using moderate weight. Um, so you had one group doing very heavy, almost powerlifting style training, and you had another group doing more typical bodybuilding style training with 10 reps, um, and that was the first study. And then the other study compared, again, you know, more like a 10 rep typical bodybuilding range uh, with a very high rep range, so 25 to 35 reps, and that was a year later in 2015. And both of these studies found that across both groups, you saw very similar hypertrophy in fact, to statistical significance, you saw basically the same hypertrophy with very heavy weights and low reps, moderate weight uh, and moderate reps, and then uh, very light weight and very high reps. Um, so all of these rep ranges are effective at causing hypertrophy. Now there are a couple of caveats that I'd like to highlight here. The first is that effort has to be equal between these groups. So you can't do these 10 reps sort of half-assed and really go all out on these probably get perhaps better hypertrophy in the one where you're exerting yourself harder. Um, so in these studies, they have to control for effort or the best that they can. And they basically do this by just taking all sets uh, to, to muscular failure. Now that doesn't mean that all sets have to be taken to failure. Uh, we covered that in a previous video on effort. Um, but I think that you should reserve failure for uh, the last set of the last exercise for a given body part. However, I think that you need to be within some reasonable threshold of failure, and usually that's leaving no more than, let's say, two to three reps in the tank. So I would guess that if you were leaving two to three reps in the tank, in the tank, then you should see similar hypertrophy across a broad spectrum of rep ranges. The other important caveat is that these groups have to be volume matched. So we know from the last video that volume is probably the main driver of hypertrophy. And so what we can say is that as long as effort and volume are matched, then you can see the same hypertrophy across a wide spectrum of rep ranges. So I would say that the very heavyweight low rep camp and the high rep uh, lightweight camp uh, both have validity to their arguments. They're both right in that they can both cause very significant hypertrophy. Now, one thing that I also wanna mention is that there is a difference between strength and hypertrophy in these studies. Um, so in this series, we're focusing mostly on muscular development. Um, however, if you do care about strength development, uh, you do have to lift heavy weight. Um, so in both of these studies, the lower reps, heavier weight groups gained more strength. Um, so that's a very important thing to keep in mind. However, if your goal is simply hypertrophy, we do know from this body of research that you can achieve significant muscular growth with a wide spectrum of rep ranges. With all of that said, uh, you'll often hear uh, coaches and personal trainers and even uh, evidence-based or science-based trainers talk about uh, a magic rep range. I don't know if there's really a magic rep range, uh, but at least a practical rep range. Um, and that's usually something like six to 15 reps or six to 12 reps or what have you. And that's kind of been uh, classified as the sort of hypertrophy rep range. And I think that this actually holds in practice. I think that something like three quarters of your training volume should come in this uh, six to 15 rep range. And you should reserve uh, sets that have reps higher than 15 reps. So 15 plus rep sets and less than six rep sets for only about a quarter of your total volume. And you can split it up between these uh, two different rep zones. And there are a few main reasons for this. So down here, I've got a continuum where you've got six to 15 reps here in the middle. And then over here, you'd have uh, more than 15. So this would be 15 plus. And then over here, you'd have uh, less than six. So less than six over here. And as you start to get more up towards this high end rep zone, uh, you run into the issue of accumulating fatigue. 
Um, if you've ever done really high rep uh, sets, especially on say the squats, uh, it's extremely taxing. You get a ton of lactate buildup. You tend to be really sore for a long time after the, the training session is done. And so in this sense, it can really impede your recovery. Um, so fatigue becomes an issue uh, as you start to get higher in the rep zone, which is why you wanna use it more sparingly. Uh, and then on the other hand, when you get into the lower rep zone, so less than say six reps, uh, I think you do increase your injury risk. Uh, as a power lifter myself, uh, I've sustained my own share of injuries, and I know it's very common in the powerlifting community uh, to see that happen. And I think that that is a function of the very heavy strength-focused training. If it gives you similar hypertrophy, so if you can get similar hypertrophy with three reps and 10 reps, but you have a lower injury risk over here with the 10 reps, then the 10 reps is the more rational choice. And interestingly, in this study, they did find that the dropout rate amongst their subjects was way higher in the three rep group. Um, so you had people either getting injured or they just couldn't handle the training because it was just too much, too heavy weight and their joints couldn't take it. Uh, so they had a lot of subjects to drop out here, uh, but not many in the 10 group, if any. Uh, so your injury risk is greater. Also, actually accumulating volume can be problematic in those heavier rep ranges. Um, so in order to match volume in this study, for example, the people doing the 10 reps only had to do three sets, but the people doing three reps had to do seven sets. Now, if you take that even to a greater extreme, imagine you were doing only one rep max training, you would have to do so many sets, just to, so even just to match, say, a 10 rep set, you might have to do 10 sets in order to get there. So your workouts are gonna get very long and they're gonna be uh, very high in terms of a, a set volume. And so actually getting enough volume in can be problematic. Uh, but for all that, there are a couple potentially good things about using uh, the higher and lower rep zones. Um, so for the higher one, it does uh, train muscular endurance uh, a little bit better. And by that, I basically mean that you're gonna be more fatigue resistant. Uh, so basically, when you train in this rep zone, you might be able to handle, handle more volume and not get quite as tired quite as easily because you've built up that sort of work capacity from the high rep stuff. Um, also, it's a little bit controversial, but we think that metabolic stress, the buildup of metabolic byproducts, can signal for hypertrophy. Um, so including some high rep stuff might be a good idea. Uh, from time to time, like I said, use it sparingly. And then the heavier stuff can be helpful from a periodization perspective. Uh, so periodization is something we're gonna get to in a later video, uh, but basically I think that if you occasionally do very heavy training, um, that can allow you to be stronger and push more weight in that sort of hypertrophy zone. And so in theory, that would mean more tension on the muscle and more hypertrophy overall. Um, so if you do want to dip down in these lower strength zones once in a while, uh, or even periodically in a, you know, the regular routine of your program, I think that that's okay. It's just that when it gets excessive, you can run into these problems over here. With all of that said, uh, I think that the bottom line here is that using a spectrum of rep ranges is actually a good idea, uh, but the majority of your volume should come in this six to 15 rep zone. Um, and I would call this the practical rep zone for hypertrophy. Um, so guys, that's gonna conclude this one on load and intensity. I think I'm actually gonna wrap this video up here and cover the remaining topics uh, in separate videos, just to keep these a little bit more digestible. Um, so if you found this to be informative, uh, please leave me a like. If you do happen to be new, uh, don't forget to check out the other two videos that preceded this one uh, in the fundamental series. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys all here in the next video for, we're gonna talk about exercise selection. So are certain exercises better than others and how do you go about picking them? Um, so I'll see you guys all then.